I definitely think being from Seattle and just gave me that foundation with the music and the culture and coming up in the era I did, I was just fortunate to grow up on a block with like a lot of other kids that were into cool music. Sometimes I feel like when I'm making music, I'm trying to recapture, somehow get that excitement I had as a little kid. It shaped everything about what I became as an artist. So I made a, a beat out of a local Seattle artist uh, named Tony B, Tony Ben. Um, this is actually a song I think that was unreleased until recently, um, but it was recorded in the 80s sometime. And I thought it was a cool one that I could use and, and strip down and show what stems can do. So I put my chops in, uh, we got, I don't know, quite a bit. When I have everything planned, it really makes no damn sense. Like. <laughs> It, I love I love that you can see what it sounds like if you're just using the two track. It sounds kind of crazy. See, I heard that and I thought, man, I can just take the drums out, remove the vocals. I even remove the bass because I want to play my own bass. So then we get to this. Every time I'm doing this, I'm, I'm looking at records like they're instruments. It's not like. We're just gonna steal their music. It's it's a part of my palette, you know. It's like a, it's part of the part of my painting, you know. What makes Serato sample so special is, you know, you could have a, a sample. You're like, I like, I like the vibe on this, but I don't necessarily want those drums competing with the drums I'm programming or the bass that I want to play. The studio in Ever called Soundview Analog. I did a session there, um, shout out to Sean, and I was just blown away at how the drums sounded in there. There's a lot of people with vintage studios that don't necessarily know how to dial in the sound I'm looking for. I did another session out there with Benji and his group NSB. Even when I did that session, I thought, I need to just get Benji back here doing break beats for me. Like, that needs to happen. Because it's like. Tempo. We're gonna run some shit. We're about to run it. That's good, that's good. And I thought that sounded great. Now, I would say the sound of that was a little more early 70s, right? And I'm even gonna gate that because it's still a little too reverby for me. Of course, we put it back in Serato sample because that's the only thing I'm gonna use on the computer to use samples. And I put in the chops, right? So from there, I had to get that and take the little roll. What I did was take that hi-hat track and just do like a... You see how like I time stretch some of them a little different, like one of them is 1%, one of them is 2%. And yeah, that's, that's, we got like kind of a root of a beat basically with that. Putting this in here, it's like it really fits the same, you know, sound palette as the Tony B stuff. It's, it fits right in the kind of beats I like to make. Um, this does not sound like a drum that was recorded in 2023, that's for sure.
I grabbed another sample from Weedle's Crew, which is a compilation that uh, my boy Supreme LaRock put together in, I don't know, 2010-ish, somewhere around there. Um, and it was the first compilation of, like Seattle funk that I think was ever done. And there was a lot of stuff on there I didn't even know about. And this is a track off of there. The song is called Darlin' Oh Darlin'. So it's like more of a disco kind of giant. And then you're listening to this like, why the hell would he put this in this beat? It doesn't really add up. But this is why we got stems and the pitch control. We can do what we want. So I'll skip forward to the part that I heard and was like, yeah, I want to throw that in the beat. Just that right there. This little progression. So then I pitched it down like three so it matched. So let's sync it um, and let's play the shot. With this one, I really just wanted the, the keyboard parts, which so I'm going to take out. So let's play what I sequenced. And this was kind of, I thought of this as being like more of like an intro kind of thing to the beat. And then it kind of, you know, gives us that resolving chord to give back to this. Well, Weedle's Groove, um, I really hadn't even thought about you know, funk music that had come from here. And, and as I learned more, I didn't, I didn't, I learned that there were, you know, artists and musicians that were actually from my neighborhood that played on big records I didn't know. I mean, we have Philip Wu, who's on some of the tracks on Weedle's Groove. You know, he played all the keys on all the Roy Ayers albums. Um, and, you know, this guy played on Roy Ayers, Everybody Loves the Sunshine. Like, that's something to be proud of, you know? You know, as I got this foundation of the B, I got the drums and, and the sample. I figure I should just play some Juno stuff over it, um, starting with the bass. For me, one of the signature things I probably had over the years is the way I play bass lines, which I don't, it's not something I really even tried to do. It's just like, I just have a, a feel for a certain kind of style I like. And I would say like this, the space I'm in now, as far as playing bass lines, is so informed from being in tuxedo and doing those kind of tracks. So I feel like I've kind of brought some of that to my hip hop stuff, like stuff I've done for like Larry June or some of these other things. They're, they definitely kind of have more of that than my older bean size, I think did. So another really cool kind of accident that happens when even if you're making a chop just off something that's just the music you're hearing, you can copy that same sequence and then just try the other instruments and see what you get. I did it with the vocal and, and I kind of like the little effect it gave me, so I'm gonna play it with the vocal now. You can see the chops. It's the same chops from before, but it's just, a, just the vocal right now. It's pretty cool. And then, yeah, so then I throw like a D-verb on it. For all the haters, I still use D-verb. I know it's like probably like a 2005 plugin. I don't know, man, I'm a traditionalist, you know? I've been using D-verb for a long time. So I threw that phaser on there too. So you got some D-verb, some phaser. You kind of tuck it in there, it just blends perfectly. So yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like almost a, a good accident. Um, and I think I could see that happen a bunch of different times. Um, even to say if I would have chopped just the vocal part, maybe would have got some interesting on the music front. I did the same thing with this intro piece that I took from the Stepping Stones song, Darlin' Oh Darlin'. And 
just, yeah, copied it and just soloed out the, the vocal on this. And so we start from here. It's kind of like an intro y thing. Some of those chords I played on the chroma, and then the vocals come. So yeah, it's another little unintended consequence. It's pretty cool. For context, I grew up where we could actually hear the siren when the Huskies squirt. We're kind of not too far from Husky Stadium, so we would hear, when they would score a touchdown, you would hear the siren before it even happened on TV. So we're trying to throw the siren in the beat just to make it extra Seattle. He beats his man. Husky Nation knows that sound means one thing. They know they'll hear the siren when the team runs out. They know they'll hear it when the Huskies score. The wailing of the siren will ring out. The sound is part of the stadium. <laughs> it's hella funny because this shit's all chill. <laughs> <laughs> We we're really gonna see if the stems can can do some work on this. All right, I'm throwing this shit in there. Oh, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I think we're in there, man. That was that worked. It worked. On this one, uh, I was really trying to work hard to show you all the varieties. I used the Tony B as you, or as you ain't. I used the vocals and uh, the keyboard parts from there. Um, for the intro, I used uh, Stepping Stones, Darlin' Oh Darlin'. I just used the keyboard and vocals from that as well. And then I played the Juno uh, bass, and then I played you know, chords, I played the chroma for chords. And then I chopped up some of my boy Benji's drums and we recorded at Soundview Analog. And last but not least, we threw the Husky Siren in there to really make it feel like home. 